I'll zoom in a bit. Keeping the T-tones a little bit larger. Move down, focus on the pronghorn. Raise up a little bit, recompose. It's locked in. Got it. Okay. Now that makes sense. So now you have this, this image. So those of you who aren't on autofocus lock, in the Canon you'll have to do. Got it right there. You got it, yep, so I recommend that. A lot of people like to use this, but then you have to keep the diode on everything, and then you're sort of a slave to where the focal point is instead of making the best composition. Okay. So I think these guys, they're spread out nicely. And if we walk over this way a little bit, we get a couple more shots, and then we'll go back to that buck. It's beautiful light on the ground. And the other thing is, forget about the pronghorns, and just shoot the, the tips of the, the peaks, the high peaks. Because uh, with that dramatic light, it's beautiful. But the shadows on the peaks are really nice. And the light's a little difficult, so look at your histogram. Does everybody understand histogram, kind of, more or less? Okay, but you're a little fuzzy, right? Yes, Okay, yes. all right, so we're gonna just talk about the histogram. Move it so you can see the histogram is there, or if you move it full frame and down again, you'll see the histogram is perfect. Y you know, you have details in the, in the shadow, although this is a very flat image, so it's not a good, this is not a good example, we'll do one later. But you have detail in all the shadows, what shadows are in the mountain, and you have detail in all the white spots. So you have detail in the white clouds, you have detail in the snow. So that's a perfect histogram. Now I'll show you what will happen if I change the, and you're at a minus three, that's what I said on Nikons, um, especially the older Nikons, it's a D4S, it's not older, but I prefer a minus three when shooting. So I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go accentuate it to a minus two. And I'm gonna take the same picture, we'll go some geese, I'm a little bit late for the geese. Now, I, this is my exposure compensation, which is equal to the histogram as importance. Because this is how I don't, I don't use bracketing hardly ever. I bracket by using my exposure compensation. You look at the histogram, it still sits, even at a minus two, these cameras are so sophisticated, have so, so great dynamic range. Even at a minus two exposure, it says here that there's still detail in the in the black areas but you're right on the edge this is dark so this is under exposure and this is the light so i'm going to go one more to a minus two and two thirds so we're starting to lose the the shadow areas and we have so much room here with the whites Okay, and I'm at a minus 2.7, but the dynamic range on these cameras is phenomenal. So you could still print this, it would be fine. And it might be fine, because this is really making it look dramatic now. So you might want to really underexpose it. Because midday, like right now, it's kind of boring light. So what the ice, that tells me right now is you've underexposed it. But look what happens to the dark oh, yeah, clouds yeah. and the light. So that's why this is so important. So yeah, that's pretty wild. Underexposing with this midday light. Well, it's sometimes dramatic. It depends on the scene. You, you know, if you're doing grass, it would not do anything. Right. But with those mountains and those shadows and the clouds, that makes it more dramatic. And yet, you know, you have all the detail in the shadows. You know, it's still not that too far off. There is a point at which I'll put it at minus four. Of course, it's gonna be really difficult to see in the back now. It's, you know, you don't see it at all. And but you say, okay, what the hell does the histogram say? It says you're clipping, you're just barely clipping yeah. the shell. Now I'm gonna go the other way. We're gonna do uh, overexposure. So the, your perfect exposure was a minus three, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go the other way at a minus, let's just say a minus, uh, I mean a plus, a plus 1.7, one and two thirds. Now, even here it looks like it's blown out, right? Yeah. 
Now, the histogram says you are now losing detail in the whites. That is, this is the wall for the, the um, highlights. So there's no detail in some, in whatever is white in there. No detail in the mount, you know, the snow and the clouds and stuff. And so it's going to be washed out. And you won't be able to bring it back, back up, basically. You, that's gone. That's what I always say. If you're going to err on one side or the other, err on the underexposure side. Okay. Save the highlights. And you can get them. This also has the option to have the highlights flash too, yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That uh, g gives you a, a better, I mean, that tells you right away mm -hmm. if you want to do that. But I tend to just use the histogram. Yeah. What does it mean in the middle of the graph when it goes all the way up at the top? Nothing. It, nothing? It just okay. it means that all the shadow and, and uh, highlights and stuff, are, it's like monochromatic. You don't need to worry about the mountain range. Mm -hmm. You just worry about right and left. 